All right, let's do recap questions two and three. Or, uh, yeah. Let's just do the rest of it. Okay. Uh, number two, pick the best method to solve algebraically. So it looks like here, uh, I need to get this into standard form and set it equal to zero. I have no idea what's going on. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, now I got 2x squared minus 8x minus 42 equals zero. Okay, so I'm going to pull out a GCF of 2 and see if this guy's factorable. Um, and, uh, oh my gosh, it is. Yes, the factors of 21 that add up to 4, I can do 7 and 3. Whoop, whoop. All right, so he's factorable. I'm going to factor it. Let's look at four. Um, ooh, I have no x term. That means I'm going to use square roots. So I'm going to divide both sides by two, and I would get x squared equals um, 500. And then I could just square root both sides, easy peasy. OK, yeah, we're definitely going to use square roots for that guy, AKA inverse operation. Uh, now we have to solve algebraically for three and five. Oh, sweet. Three. This guy is just this. So I'm going to use my factored form and prick up where I left off, right? Okay, so let's factor this guy. I'm looking for the factors of 21 that add up to 4. They're going to be 7 and 3. And then the middle number is negative, so the bigger number needs to be negative. And I am good. Uh, 2 equals 0 makes no sense. Throw that out. Solve. And those are our two answers. Hooray for us. Okay. Let's look at number 5. Oh, we already kind of did this. Like, So we've got divide both sides by 2. And then I'm going to square root both sides. I'm going to break 500 into simplest radical form. That's going to be 100 times 5. The square root of 100, when you take a square root, you put a plus or minus. 